Hey everyone, welcome back to CyberSecure TV. Uh, last week we talked about the regular expressions. This week we're going to see how the regular expressions are actually used inside the application firewall, and we're going to uh, see like you know what are the, some of the alternatives that we can use when you are pen testing an application for uh, cross site scripting vulnerability. Of course, we're going to use like you know I'm going to give you more examples in the upcoming videos, uh, but here I want to explain why the regular expressions we saw in the last week uh, video was really, really uh, useful and, and how you can use some of those techniques to actually bypass the WAF. So let's get started. Like, you know, web application firewall, as I said, is like most common security controls for all the applications. And, and being a security professional, you should definitely recommend for, for each and every application to have a WAF. Now, one thing which is very common is uh, the regular expressions are mostly used. Uh, to write some of the rules which are used by this WAF, right? Uh, the screenshot I have it here is for like you know Amazon Web Services AWS, but of course uh, pretty much all the WAF works uh, same way. So there are, there are a bunch of rules, and then there is there is an allow list and deny list, and and based on the rules and the traffic it detects, and then it checks whether uh, this is allowed or not, and then once if the traffic is allowed, then it will go past this WAF and maybe like you know hit the gate API gateway or the cloud front or load balancer, however your is your application is structured. Uh, but usually that's the like you know basic way of 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 looking at it. The reason I have used the allow list and deny list uh, rather than whitelisting or blacklisting just to be all inclusive, but yeah, uh, those those terms are used interchangeably on the internet. So now let's go back and, and, and see like you know the basics of what is whitelisting and blacklisting, uh, which is very common. We have talked about a lot, so I'm not going to go deep into that. But usually we have seen the whitelisting approach is what preferred by the security professionals, right? Because you only allow the traffic or or like you know input from the user which is something that you know and, and you have trusted or you trust while the blacklisting is you have to find each and every uh, input which should not be allowed and then block it so uh, of course we, we we always recommend to have whitelisting however the the reason it's not very popular maybe not everyone uh, like you know implements that because the whitelisting uh, gives like a lot of false positive. So suppose sometimes like you know, it, it blocks actual application or the user traffic and, and, and causes uh, some issues for our customers. So that's why uh, like you know in that case uh, some of the organizations implement the blacklisting and, and that's why we, we see that many many places that blacklisting is, is there. Now in putting together the blacklisting is very difficult. So what this pretty much like you know WAF producer does is like they put together a list of rules to protect the web app against the various attack vectors that are used to exploit the most common vulnerabilities. Now imagine you have like you know uh, something like SQL injection. So what what the blacklisting will do is like this is a simple payload or one is equal to one. And as soon as the WAF detects it, it's gonna block it. Same thing with the script alert one two three. As long as it detects it, it's gonna block block it. So that's a blacklisting approach. Now the problem with the blacklisting is there are more chances to have WAF bypass. So earlier we saw like what is the issue with the whitelisting, right? Now we have only also we also saw like what is the issue with the blacklisting. So there are multiple ways to reach to the same goal. Like uh, suppose like you change this same like you know you probably change some part of the payload and then then you have to every time that, that there is a change that detects like web producers or or whoever is the man like you know managing that rule set has to has to add that into the rule set and then if if they do not add it or if, if the rule is not if the rule is not uh, something that well known then maybe you have a back bypass that that's why that's why keeping track of each and every variant of it's very hard, very very hard. Uh, just like you know antivirus, uh, and that's why we're gonna talk here, gonna talk about and, and emphasize on the WAF bypass. So so there there are some ways like you know some payloads which are not known to anyone and that will cause the WAF bypass. Sometimes you have um, the the variant is known but it's not maybe added to the rule set. So that's that's when the WAF bypass is caused. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the like you know in this of course I'm I don't want to make it like super long video so we're gonna focus on the cross scripting uh, some of the variants in this in this episode and then probably I'll take I'll cover more and more in the future videos. 
So if we start with the cross site scripting, uh, the common payloads that we have seen is like you know alert XSS or alert one. Now these are some very common variants which are uh, in the WAF and it's usually blocked. So what you should and and these are like you know common payloads which even the scanner uh, tries. So instead of doing that, probably what you can do is to bypass the WAF is use the prompt. So what the prompt does is it ma displays the dialog box that prompts the user for the input like this one. Then uh, and also don't don't use like another you know, common numbers like one, two, and three or one or etc. You can also use something like four, four, five, four or some random numbers. Then there is also confirm, uh, which is which is not similar to alert, but it it actually displays the dialog box with a message that yeah, do you want to confirm? That means yeah, your script is being executed. Then you can also use like alert, but in a in a different way. Uh, slash access dot source. And then window sub object is pretty much supported by all the browsers, so it rep it represents the uh, Windows uh, sorry the browser's window. So uh, maybe that's another variant that you want to use uh, if if the common payloads are being blocked. Uh, next one we have seen like documented cookies is usually used to sort of like you know uh, steal the session token or, or the cookie information. Uh, however, sometimes uh, you don't want to. Uh, that's that's easily uh, like in you know, a block by the web. So what you want to do is use with document alert cookie. So with statement is actually extends the scope chain for a statement. Um, so if you, I'm not gonna dive deep into like what is the with statement and why it is used, but probably you can Google it for better. Uh, but that's the another variant which will give you the same value, like same uh, same uh, cookie value that you intended to get using the documented cookie. Uh, the next thing you can do is alert, but use the cookie inside the square brackets, right? And then you can also use the same variant which we use we saw in the previous slide. So here you can do like slash cookie dot source, and then there is also you can break it break like you know the cookie. So here in the last one, this is very interesting because you can. You can uh, break the cookie into the two parts and then use the source uh, to still reflect the same thing. So these are some other other payloads which you can use to grab the session cookie or, or cookie value. Um, then we have also seen like you know sometimes we cause uh, error or we we want to execute that because like based on the image source. Which is very very common, or some inline JavaScript like JavaScript uh, call and alert documented cookie. But rather than what you want to do is you can use the SVG on load. So SVG element is a container for the SVG graphics. So that is not very common in all the WAF rule set. Then you can also use the video or audio uh, error message instead of images. Uh, video is for of course like you know. Uh, video elements and the uh, audio is for uh, audio element uh, to play any audio on the on the web page. And then that last thing you want to do is you you actually want to you can also like base sixty encode the base sixty four uh, the same uh, like you know same uh, payload and then supply uh, supply in there. So as you can see, we have supply like data tags, HTML, then encode the base sixty four, and if you decode into the into the uh, burp or or base64 decoding you can see it actually turns out like script alerts xss script so these are some of the common variants uh, you would see uh, uh, or you want to try when you are trying to pen test the application uh, of course um, some WAF are different and and like you know some are some might not block this even the simple payloads uh, depending on how those are implemented but uh, just to conclude what we have seen in this video is uh, we have learned about like how the WAF rules are written. That's mostly regex, and we have seen the regex is also vulnerable if it's not uh, done uh, effectively, like in the previous episode. And then the second thing we have learned is what is blacklisting and whitelisting, and and why both has some pros and cons, and and a lot of companies and organizations are still relying on the blacklist rather than whitelisting because it of course not causes a lot of disruptions to their customers. And then we have seen what is the access payloads that you can use in case you detect the WAF uh, during the auditing of your application. So hope you hope you this was helpful and and you liked this video. Uh, let me know if any of these payloads were really helpful or do you have you have any other list of payloads uh, you you want to share with our community. That would be great as well. 
Um, I'm also going to extend this into the next episode and then give you some more payloads and examples which you can use. But until then, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and, and please hit the thumbs up button uh, if you like this video and subscribe for the weekly episodes. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye.